Am I trying this right now? For real? You don't have to. Nah, man, I'm kind of hungry, little T. I think like a bite is coming. Damn, that's good package up good. Do I have to rate it like one out of ten? Why not? Hmm? Ooh. Where's this place at? Oh, in Morristown. It's good. <laughs> it's good. This we got the deal sign right here. <laughs> Mike Williams got a, a new team in a new spot. It's the little things, man. I, I feel a, yeah. a theme for today's conversation. That, that reminds me. You know what that reminds me of? What's that? That, that, that scene is a scene in school days where uh, a, a girl's dancing with Bill Nunn. She said to him, you so country? <laughs> you so country? Oh, this this got the deal done right here. Mm -hmm. This is good. Where this from? Well, it's the little things. Oh, okay. When it's recruiting... <laughs> It's the little things. You never know what makes a difference. And that's the theme I think we're going to end up coming back to a lot today, both in sports and in my personal life. Uh, but honestly, man, let's start with the Jets because, um, you know, uh, it usually doesn't end well with the Jets, uh, as they know throughout their, their history. Um, yeah. They've come up in conversation for us a lot lately. I've had some smart-ass remarks about it. Um, <laughs> you always, you never miss an opportunity. You worse than Bill Belichick. You never miss an opportunity to shit on the Jets. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But you cannot deny. You can, you cannot deny. The Jets. You cannot deny. Um, for what it's worth, because you know how I feel about the offseason Super Bowl. But for what it's worth, you cannot deny the notable additions that the Jets have made this offseason. Tyron Smith, of course, a tackle. We mentioned Mike Williams, Morgan Moses at the other tackle, John Simpson at guard. So they really shored up that offensive line to protect Aaron Rodgers. To Rod Taylor to back up Aaron Rodgers. Can't get much better as a, as a veteran backup than to Rod Taylor. And on defense, uh, Javon Kinlaw, Isaiah Oliver, uh, Lakey Fotu. I mean, you know Robert Sala, go ahead and boys playing on defense. So, uh, but the Mike Williams signing, man, like, if he can stay healthy, and look, it doesn't help playing at MetLife for half your season, but if he can stay healthy, I got to compliment the Jets on finding the perfect compliment to Garrett Wilson. Yeah, you know what, Mike? Uh, I, I hated to see what happened last year. What was it? Five snaps into this four or five snaps into the season. Aaron Rodgers goes down with the Achilles and then all the hype that we we'd uh, just placed at the feet of the Jets and all the attention on the Jets and remember hard knocks yeah. and all the stuff that so much attention here we go again. That it just kind of <laughs> you know we're gonna do it yeah, again right yeah here it is <laughs> it's like everything we'll do it again. all the air <laughs> taken out of the room the stadium the tri-state yeah. region go on and on it was like same old Jets but that actually and I didn't want to see that I wanted to see what Aaron Rodgers would do with them but Aaron Rodgers injury was actually a good thing for the Jets because it allowed them to see who they are Last year, they thought they were a quarterback away yeah. from being a Super Bowl contender. They were not. They yeah. were not. So if Aaron Rodgers had played last year, that offensive line was still terrible. He would have made it better because he's a veteran quarterback. Garrett Wilson still didn't have anybody who could take legitimate attention off of him, even though Aaron Rodgers had his playground buddies there and his hand-picked yeah. offensive coordinator. They weren't good enough. So like I wonder Rodgers how much Rodgers would have struggled. Low key. Yeah, like, right, exactly. Like, you know, like how, how much they, would Rodgers have actually struggled? They, they might this. have been seven and ten. Yeah. They need oh yeah. They may have been they may have been, yeah, seven and ten, eight and nine. Uh maybe yeah. one game better. But I love my favorite signing, yeah. Mike Williams, everything you said. Yep. No no lies told. My favorite signing is Tyron Smith. Yeah. Look, I, I know he's thirty three. He hasn't uh he's missed a lot of games over the years, but they gave him a contract and they didn't think he would take it because it was loaded with so many incentives and they thought he must have had a better deal out there. He didn't. So his contract could be up to worth, you know, up, up to $20 million, but that for, for him to hit those incentives, he's going to have to play more than he has in the last almost 10 years. But when he does play, that's a dude. Tyron mm -hmm. Smith, 
I mean, that is a great pickup for the Jets, and I'm just surprised that other teams he didn't need say, no help. oh, yeah, he could be our, he could be our Trent he Williams. He don't need no help. He don't need no That's help. That's our Trent Williams right there. Yeah. Yeah, no, but I, a, I'm, I'm falling for it. I'm falling for it, Mike. I'm falling for the Jets hype. And they still got the 10th pick. The and they still got the 10th pick. And, and obviously the entire draft, but starting with the 10th overall pick uh, to play around with to, to make this team even better. No, I, I, I feel you. Um, there's a lot of uh, a lot of reason for optimism uh, with the New York Jets right draft about to now. If I'm you, hey, still yeah. draft a tackle. Draft another one. Right. Your, pro- your long-term problems haven't been solved. You're long- and you yeah, just talked about Tyron Smith's injury history. Uh, a tackle would make a lot of sense. Uh, when there are some solid ones, there should be some solid ones uh, in that number 10 range. No, I, you said they weren't a quarterback away. No. And, I, and I, I offered that, well, who's to say they wouldn't struggle with Rodgers given all the roster flaws that they had. But I could also say those rosters... That, or those roster flaws or that roster as constructed was not built to support a backup quarterback. So maybe maybe they were a backup quarterback away more than they realized because uh, I can't help but wonder what a Joe Flacco, not that Joe Flacco would have signed up to back up Aaron Rodgers. Maybe, maybe that would have been better than sitting on the couch as long as he did until LeBron's eventually called. But, you know, we've talked a lot about how the Jets didn't properly handle Zach Wilson's development. Not to say Zach Wilson's any good, but his development, mm. uh, some of the decision making was poor, throwing him in there, before right? he was ready. He's still there for now, but I'm saying like, you know, is the it, roster flaws were exacerb- exacerbated by the lack of a capable now? backup. <laughs> yeah, is it well, over? It, they probably got to pay they, somebody to take on his uh, take on his contract, but I can't I can't why, see but, him coming back again. But why? But why move on? Why move on? He got Aaron Rodgers coming back. He gave him more support. He gave him a better offensive line. He gave him a number two receiver. Why move on from now, who? Zach Wilson? But for Zach Wilson, you got one more year. You don't that's have to expen- pick up the That's option. an expensive third it's, quarterback. That's an ex- that's no. an unnecessarily expensive third quarterback. Because he ain't your backup. Not, not really. He shouldn't not be your really. backup. Be, we learned we learned hey, that last why? year. Let him do what? Who's your backup? Let him do what? Teron Who's Taylor. I just told you, Teron okay. Taylor. He's injury prone too. He gets hurt a lot. Uh, why not let him compete for the compete for the job? Terod Taylor is a great be a great number two or number three. Why not? I'm saying they should let him. Hey. I'm saying they should let him compete for the job from Jump Street, as in when he first got drafted second overall. That that ship has sailed <laughs> for him competing for the job. No, it's no, no, no. We, no, you can't hey, be trusted now, with come this on, job. Man. You got him under no, contract. Like we we, we saw on. this last year. No, go be great somewhere it's, else. As well, no, like last, last year was inj- injury problems. Injury problems. Not his, not his fault. It wasn't all his fault. No, okay, good. Thank you for amending that. It wasn't all his fault. Yeah, there was a lot yeah, of... Some of it was. But he did, some of it. He, Zach, uh, here's the nicest thing I'll say. Zach Wilson may not be the problem, but he ain't the solution. Okay? And if you ain't hey, part didn't of the you problem... Say about, if you ain't part of the solution, then you are part of the problem. Yes. And, and before before I go all in, I'm like, ooh, before I go back in on the Jets, see, this is what, this is what <laughs> happens when you just... You just, like jump to conclusions or just uh, me just, just no me me just speaking oh, oh, too okay. soon. I spoke too soon because oh, what's that thing you time. say about you have your thing about um, you had system quarterbacks. You revised that to circumstance you know, circumstantial quarterbacks. quarterbacks. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But then I think you have something you say about for those organizations. That don't understand what I mean. it's or mm-hmm. it's organizations that mm-hmm. win. And this old trifling organization, that's still the Jets, <laughs> where Woody Johnson comes out after the season, blasting everybody. Blasting Joe Douglas, blasting Robert Sala. He's mad at Zach Wilson. He's just mad at everybody. So has that changed? Yes, they've got a, a night, nice, they got a nice complimentary receiver in Mike Williams and the offensive line upgrades that we mentioned in defensively. What's Woody Johnson going to do? Is he going to sit down somewhere? Is he going to sit down and let his football people do what they got to do? Or is he just going to just kind of hover and be a nuisance? Because organizations win. Organizations, not individuals. Well, well, thankfully, we know what Aaron Rodgers is not going to do, and that's run for vice president. <clears throat> I'm, I'm, I'm glad that story ended about as quickly as it started. Uh, knock on wood. Um, but wait, you got so much smoke for the Jets. What about your Patriots, big dog? What about what 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 about uh what about your golden goose? Hey, also known as what's the, going on? 
Also known as the college fund. You know what I'm saying? As a college like, fund? I, 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 again, I went, I went all in on not going all in on, you know, the offseason Super Bowl and not crowning anybody. Rest in peace, Dennis Green in March. But uh, if I were hypothetically into losers and winners in free agency, yeah. I think we know what column the Patriots would be. And if I were, if I were into such, you know, declarations to the Patriots, man, like I, I thought they were tired of missing the playoffs. I thought I mean, Mr. Yeah, Kraft well, is, you know, pretty adamant about uh, wanting up to the standard, and I don't, I don't see a, I don't see an urgency or an aggression that I would expect from somebody who said, you know, this is not what we've come to expect around here you in ever, England. It seems like they, seems like ever, they're more than content with six these, for now. You ever hear from these folks? They got like, uh, and, and not that you know, I don't, I don't know anybody like this, but I've heard, you know, families that got like eight, nine siblings, ten siblings. And you always wonder what happens at what happens at the holidays, what happens at birthdays, and you know what's under the tree? Sensible gifts. They're like, hey, we got some socks for you. Uh, here you go. Here's something. We we got a broom for you. We got a mop for you. We got things that things practical things around the house. That's what the Patriots wait, did this offseason. They picked up sidebar. Things. Sidebar. Yeah. The older you get, yeah. don't you love those practical things? Like I've come yeah. to embrace well, like. I'll, I'll take a nice pair of socks in a second. Like okay. I'll take, well, I mean, cause it's, cause I'll, yeah, I'll take some take underwear because I probably because I probably got a few too many holes in the underwear that I do wear. So thank you for saving me the trip to replace it. Like I, well, I don't turn up my nose if, at these practical gifts. I, I like I like if you feel that way. If you feel that way, you should appreciate the New England Patriots offseason because they did. I love Jacoby Brissett. I love they, Onk. They needed draws. I, love, I told you that okay, they, they like needed KJ some draws. Out. They, they had some draws. They had we, holes in their KJ socks. Osborne is a nice pair of Fruit of the Looms is what you're saying. Okay, nice there you pack, go. A nice three pack of Fruit of the Looms or hands. That's what they did. They're they're so Mike. I just need you to understand the New England Patriots. I, I everybody out there. If you know you watch the dynasty and you're thinking about Bill Belichick and Tom Brady in the good old days. That was great. Uh, and believe me, it was great for the Hollies. Uh, there's UNCF and there's the Patriots. Edge <laughs> Patriots for the Hollies. Okay, yeah. so all these great things, the Patriots, you need to look at them as an expansion team. The New England Patriots are an expansion team, and all mm. they did was sign capable players. They didn't sign anybody mm. great, but capable players. Some of their own capable oh, players. Does this, is Mike, this, does this yep. harken back to, I don't know, the 2001, 2001 offseason? Is that what you know? I it was Mike like Rabel, a lot of bargain basement Antoine a lot of Smith. a lot of Filene's basement shopping as I remember as someone shout else described shout out Filene's rest in power yeah. Filene's Roman yeah. Pfeiffer Brian Cox Larry Izzo that kind of thing okay mm -hmm. yeah so so they picked up you know they they picked up some guys like KJ Os KJ Osborne he's a good player uh, and they signed a lot of, you know, Jacoby Brissett, Antonio Gibson, just like solid, just a lot of solid guys. They didn't sign anybody bad. Not sexy. Yeah. There, there's, yeah. Not a, there's not a signing that I say, well, why'd you sign that guy? But mm. there's not a signing that makes you go, ooh. Even you, who appreciate your nice pair of socks, you don't look at Savannah and Sarah and say, woo! <laughs> this, is, oh, this is fantastic. You go, Depends on the socks. If there's you go, no socks, you. you know. Thank yeah. you. This is this is helpful. So the yeah. New England Patriots. Just what I need. Just what uh, I need. They're needed. so practical. Not what I wanted is what I needed. They're so practical, Mike, that when we talk this time next year, we might have the third, <laughs> fourth, fifth pick of the trade. <laughs> they'll be right. They'll be right back here. Um, Just a nice little, our, nice little off season for them. Let's get to the number one pick of the draft, uh, the presumptive number one pick of the draft. That's Caleb Williams. And let's stay on Ooh. campus speaking to college. Dude, come don't on. do this again. Like, no, I, come on, man. <laughs> come on, man. Like, come on. You can't sit up here lying like another. Like, I know I'm you were lying. lying on Monday. You were lying. lying. <laughs> so on, you ever have that situation where, like, you tell somebody they're lying and they start laughing and then that yeah. Confirms for you that they're lying, but they're only laughing because it's funny. I'm not laughing because I'm lying. I'm laughing because it's funny and flattering that you think I know anything. 
I, I appreciate that. I appreciate that my, my reputation yeah, you be out there. as an NFL you be insider. I, you know, with it, Thursdays during with the NFL you're season nice for you're Amazon doing. Prime Video. I like the way you sure, about these, I'm out in these know, streets. Sure. You do, know I, what? do I, 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 do I make I like some about. phone calls? Do I talk to some people? You yeah, talk I mean, to you some know, people? sure, <laughs> sure. Yeah. But I mean, I, no, I'm laughing because you assume I know something when nothing could be farther from the truth. <laughs> because, but I think people need to understand. I think people need to understand. Like the, a lot of the insiders. I'm not naming any names, but a lot of the insiders out there today are almost caricatures of what an insider is. You know, they pound their chest and. You know, I'm told and you know, sources say and they just kind of they harumph and they they, they, they can't stay <laughs> off. Right? They can't stay off social media <laughs> to, tell you, to tell you to tell you to tell you like just you know, man information, but you've never been that kind of insider. See Mike Smith. He's a he's a, I'm he's an insider I'm for the culture. He's an insider for the culture, you know, brother like Mike Smith. It's kind of smooth. It's kind of smooth. You know, things just kind of happen. He knows information, but he won't just kind of say, "I found this out." And be like, "Oh, that's good to know," and he'll put it away yeah. and he'll drop it in the conversation, real smooth like. So and those that know I know how you roll. Those that know I know. No. I don't need. I don't need to keep score. I don't. I don't need to keep score. You know, I don't need to tell you that I was right a long time ago. I don't need to tell you that my third eye seen it coming before it happened. I appreciate that. Oh, I appreciate you peeping yeah. game. I appreciate you peeping mm-hmm. game. Um, so Caleb Williams today has his pro day. He is going to perform for all 32 teams. Uh, of course, only one can draft him. And that one is expected to be the Chicago Bears at number one. And again, I, 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 I told you, I would be shocked. Just I'm just looking at how Ryan Poles moves. I wouldn't rule anything out. I wouldn't rule out taking somebody else. Uh, I wouldn't rule out a trade down if one materializes, but it takes it takes two to you know, to make a trade happen. Trade right? down to whom? Take for somebody example, to come like, up. You, ru- you wouldn't be surprised if they traded down where? Just, just, just for instance. You know, just one, just one spot. Just, just, just one spot. Just, oh, one you know, spot. Just a little flip, it's a little flip flop. So Washington. Little flip flop. That's all. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's a little flip flop. It's a little flip flop. Yeah. Okay. Little flip flop. Um. So he likes two guys. But he likes Caleb and he likes Jaden. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. I didn't say that so at all. Be. I just said I would not rule out anything. It's because I've been doing this too long. Cause I'm putting words in my mouth, man. Um, okay, all right, all right. But if it but if it pans out, you know, I would be like, what you say? What was the word? Harumph? <laughs> I told you. I, <laughs> I couldn't tell him. I couldn't say it then. I couldn't say it in March. Right. Hey, let's put that. See, that's you gotta do. You gotta, that, you gotta. You gotta. Couch you gotta. It. It. You gotta exactly. You gotta hey, 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 Gary. Ten twenty-five on March twentieth. Go run that shit yeah, you back. You got it. Run that you back. Found it right. Flat, flashback right. Hey, Nat. Put that on social. <laughs> it's like, you got to hedge your bets because it also if you say it yeah. a certain way that you can't be wrong because yeah. like if he takes Caleb Williams and it was like, oh, yeah, we're always taking Caleb Williams. We're never not taking Caleb Williams. And if it's actually what it appears to be. So obviously I didn't say they weren't taking Caleb Williams. I just said I wouldn't. Don't be surprised. If, don't be surprised you know, if. Yeah, yeah, you would never. But it would, yeah, like I don't have to be accountable for that. So that, that's the game in a nutshell. Anyway, um, pro day today. Um, I remember pro days. I remember Jamarcus Russell's pro day. I remember Kyle Bowler's pro day. Um, but remember like, Zach Wilson, Zach Wilson's Zach pro Wilson. day. Remember? Oh, was high five. Throwing all Robert over. Sala with a fist bump. Throwing all over oh. the place. Ro- rolling left. Was ro- great. You know, throwing right. The whole thing, right? But against like, air. Ultimately, nobody. Re- Look awesome. Ultimately, air. nobody remembers pro days, right? And I don't think. Yeah. I think the the last thing the Bears, or for that matter, anybody else needs to see today from Caleb Williams is how he throws the ball. Um, they know how he throws the ball. They know he can throw the ball. They know he has all the tools. The questions about Caleb Williams, and some of them are exaggerated, but the questions about Caleb Williams that exist nonetheless, nobody's perfect, are ones that can't be answered at a pro day. Um, or at least I don't think they can be answered at a pro day. I think um, one of them is, is can he be disciplined? Can he, can, he, can he take the simple play? You know, can he, can he, can he, be, uh, can he take care of the ball? You know, is he somebody that's going to, always look for the off schedule superstar Patrick Mahomes, you know, um, type of highlight real play, or is he just going to operate within the, the structure of the offense? Um, good problem to have because I, I that and, and you scoffed at that when I brought that up before and I agree because it's like, just because you haven't seen him do something doesn't mean he can't. 
You know what I mean? Like, and I think, I think a lot of times we get caught up in what we haven't seen somebody do at the collegiate level. And that's why it's such an inexact science. And it's a projection because just because they haven't doesn't mean they can't. You mentioned Bill Nunn, his father, the late Bill Nunn, the Hall of Fame scout for the Steelers. Right. He was, yep. he was famous for yelling in the, in the draft room whenever somebody would give a critique of somebody, it's like, hey, don't, that's coaching. That's coaching. Don't tell me about coaching, okay? Tell me about tools. What kind of tools? What kind of athleticism does he have for us to work with? And it's our coach's job to get the best out of that player. But don't tell me about a flaw or a habit that, that comes down to coaching. And so uh, well, I think there what? are aspects of Caleb Williams' game that may, that may confound, confuse, or concern some scouts that simply come down to coaching. Go ahead. I'm sorry. There was, I, I would say, you know, this reminds me, you know, the, the criticism of Caleb Williams. It really is a good problem to have. There was a, a, a book written on the Kansas City Chiefs, maybe, you know, probably like three or four years ago. Really good book called Kingdom Quarterback. Mm-hmm. Of course. <laughs> so Mahomes, Chiefs. But there's an anecdote in that book with Mahomes when he was his apprentice year and he's sitting there uh, watching Alex Smith uh, do his thing. And they're in a quarterback's meeting. And Brad Childress uh, was an assistant coach with the Chiefs at the time. And Childress gives a quarterback test. He's like, he has this film up there. He said, okay, what are your options? Give him two options. What would you take here? Would you take essentially what amounts to a check down or a throw that would amount in like a 17 or 18 yard completion? And Patrick Mahomes is looking at the film and he's like, shit, I'll take the post which is like 40 yards because mm-hmm. he saw something that the coaches didn't see. like, no, no, I don't yeah, like, yeah. there ain't no binary thing. Yeah. I don't like that. Yeah. I don't like that. Right. I'm going there. And cause yeah. I have the ability to do it. Now that get you in trouble. But if you got the goods, which Patrick Mahomes does, you see things that ordinary coaches and ordinary quarterbacks don't see it. I think that's what you might have in Caleb Williams. I'm not saying he's going to be Patrick right. Mahomes, but those guys with that ability right. and that confidence. Aaron Rodgers, who he likes to compare himself they just, to. Yeah. It, I understand why it's hard for him just like to run an ordinary, uh, like, like, well, why would I, he's probably fighting himself. Why would I do that? Yeah. Why would I, why would I run an ordinary offense when I, I just don't, I don't see it that way. And I want to point out the dude had, how many, how many interceptions did he have against Notre Dame last year? Three? Three. I think he finished the season with four. With four. Might have four. All, yeah. Well, that's the other part. Like, the numbers he put up the last two years, they ain't all highlights. You may only see the highlights on YouTube or the highlights on Twitter where he's picking up a, the, a low snap and, he, and he, you know, or, or, he, or he's running around and as he's falling out of bounds, he's throwing the ball. Like, that's not all his numbers. Like, every play wasn't that. You're not, you're not going to tell me that he wasn't running some plays the way they were designed to be run. But to your point, give me a guy who can right. improvise. Give me a guy who can create off schedule because most plays are going to be off schedule. Everything ain't going to work the way you design it on the chalkboard. If they still use chalkboards, I don't know. But point is, it's like that's 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 not how it's if always going to they, yeah, they should. They should. Some pure. Um, that, that's not how it's always going to go. So I'd rather have a guy that, you know, similar to what Mike Tomlin says, uh, I'd rather have a guy that I got to say wool than sick him. I'd rather have a quarterback that's got special ability than a guy that's just like a guy. Um, but the other thing that can't be determined necessarily through a pro day, and I think is what the Bears are really going to be looking at, is just how my man moves. Just how he moves, how he interacts, uh, how he carries himself, you know, uh, his body language, what he says, all the, all the things that they want to get to know about a guy that they're going to invest so heavily in and really going to invest the, the future of this franchise into, yet again, as they reset this franchise at the quarterback position again, like they have limited opportunities to get to know this young man and observe this young man. So I think the main thing for his pro day, uh, emphasis on the pro part, what kind of professional can he show himself to be at what is typically and traditionally a very scripted, very orchestrated very set up a success environment. I, I think the Bears are more looking for the the intangibles than the tangibles because the tangibles, as Caleb has already told us, is already on film. Well, you know what? This is going to be and this is I, this is a different time right now. This is a, it's this it era is. that we're in, and I New think dudes. evaluators are going to have to adjust to the era. So yeah, go back ten years. 
and all the questions you have about a guy off the field, how's he, you know, what, what kind of leader is he? What do the people in the program say about him? What do his coaches say about him? 10 years ago, pre NIL, that conversation, that's one conversation. So now, yeah. in, in the NIL era, it's hard to, you can't use the, the standards and the lenses that you use from 2014. That wasn't even that long ago, but you can't say, well, what about this guy? Because you hear some of the questions about Caleb Williams are, well, you got, you got a lot of money, you know, hurt, you, you live away from your teammates or, you know, um, you know, the crying thing after the game. Like, okay, this is a different game. This is a different game. One, it's a different generation. Like, mm -hmm. What you think, what you think is toughness, whatever you think that is, or mental toughness right. or resiliency. Right. That's not evolved. That's not the same. It's not the same. You right. got to really understand uh, the generation that we're talking about. So I, I wonder if people are going down a road that they don't need to go down. There, there ain't nothing wrong with Caleb Williams. There are no off field so. issues. There are no off field yeah. issues with Caleb Williams. It's just a different era. This is what this is what you have. And so right. it's not going to look like his, it fa did his father's too involved. His father's Andrew too Luck. involved. It's like Wait, his father's yeah. two of well, speed of fathers, Oliver Luck. Yeah, Oliver Luck was involved, you know. Archie right. Manning was involved, you know. <laughs> his father's too you, involved. It's like, like aren't I'm, you I'm okay with that. Oh, <laughs> yes. okay. Aren't you yeah, absolutely as a, as yes. a father of three? Yes. Aren't you yes. offended by that? What, what yes. do you mean I'm too yeah. involved? What's wrong and, with and, me? And, you got a problem with me? Right. Right. It's my son. <laughs> like, what am I supposed to do? Like, right. you know, be indifferent, you know? Uh, and I, but that'll all work they like, itself. But they like you know the, I mean? the cliche the will be fine. The father, they, yeah. The cliche would be fine, though, wouldn't? Hey, you know, this kid, oh man, some toughness. Came you know, up from a rough grew background. Up in a single, single had parent no home. You had know, no parents. Ra raised, raised his himself, siblings. <laughs> raised and, and himself. Walked uphill. He, hey, look. Barefoot hey, look. through the snow, both ways. Hey, he was. You know. He was told. He was told at six years old. Caleb, you the man of the house now. Yeah, man, you sick. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he was, he was swinging, he was swinging drugs and slinging footballs. Like I mean, it's just you know, that, 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 all of that. Right. He's hungry. He got to feed his family. You know, this guy. Oh, yeah. He's hungry. Yeah. This guy. Yes or no, sir. To him. Football's, Football's important, important to him. To him. Yeah. It's his way out. It's his way out. Football is yeah. his way out of the hood. Go, go like you're ringing, like like your mom's ringing the dinner bell in the hood. You know, <laughs> it's just it's a whole, it's a whole, it's a whole thing is a script for Mini Given Sunday. This is Mini Given Sunday. This is some Willie Beeman oh. shit, you know. Um, Willie Beeman. But no, but having said all that, I, I just, I think, and that would be with any quarterback, not just Caleb. I think a lot of what the Bears are going to be evaluating is is not how he throws the ball. We know he can throw the ball. Um, you know, it's really just whatever opportunity they can get to, to know the kid. And then he got his visits and this, that, and the other. The other, um, or, hey, uh, pro just, or before yeah. you go on, just real quick. Yeah. The yeah. Bears were the commanders. Stop. Okay, stop. Um, you really, you really, I'm flattered. I really am. I'm flattered. Um, meanwhile, Marvin Harrison says, nah, I ain't doing your combine. I ain't doing your pro day. I'm standing on my business that has already been handled and put on film at the Ohio State University. <laughs> Mar Marvin is such a chip off the old block. I love it. I mean, <laughs> like, like, yeah, you want to make like, a I'm name not, for yourself. What do, I, what do I have to what do I have to gain <laughs> by running your 40? What do I have to gain by performing in front of air? You see me eat up cornerbacks the last several years. Yeah, it, he if he wants to make a name for himself, he'd do the opposite of what he's doing, but he's doing things that Marvin Harrison would have done and Marvin Harrison did uh, for most of his career with the Colts. I got to I got to I got to be honest with you. I really don't understand what he's doing here. Now, I understand not I, one or the other. So Caleb Williams didn't he showed up at Indy just like Marvin Harrison Jr. did uh, did some interviews, but didn't do the drills. I get it. Right. OK, now he's got a pro day. He's going to do the drills. So I, I, I'm not going to do it the way when you say or where you want me to do it. I'm not going to do it in Indy. I'll do it in Los Angeles. Okay. Marvin Harrison Jr. goes to Indy, doesn't do anything there, and is not going to do his pro day. Or, or, or the Ohio State pro day. It's not his pro day. The Ohio State pro day. Sure. Sure. 
Why? Like, what? I, I'm, I'm just, I wonder what the, what's the, what's the logic? Why I don't, don't know. I mean, maybe, maybe he wants his test scores to be a, what is it? A, a riddle inside a mystery wrapped in an enigma. Maybe, maybe, maybe he I wants guess. to leave something to the imagination, you know? Um, you know, these colleges nowadays, the test optional, right? I've been, I've been learning a lot about the college process and the application process. Yeah, they're bringing test it back, optional. though. A lot of them are bringing it back. Yeah, yeah, bring yeah. Back, back in the day, you know, we back. had to take we had to take those standardized tests. Yes, I think I don't I don't think Marvin Harrison can hurt himself, but he can subject himself. Because like if Marvin Harrison goes out and runs a 40, what's he gonna run? What's he gonna run in a 40? What, four, what, four. what would you guess ballpark? I think four four okay four four, four runs four, high four four, four five four okay four five four five which four, run, okay four, perfect four, which runs yeah. four five which runs four five four five ooh they're like get, ooh yeah exactly exactly now he's yeah, getting yeah. like four five hmm, I don't know is he slow does it, Michael you watch every Ohio State game every Saturday or Friday as, yeah, as it were yeah does he run away slow. from people yeah, <laughs> okay always. he's not slow right always. so it's like I don't, get I, open. He, I don't think he's gonna hurt himself but he could be subjected to the he gets to be subjected to the bullshit that is, you know, characteristic of, you know, the silly season that, of the lead up to the draft. So I get not wanting to will be it, bothered with it. Um, I, don't, I, I don't question would, his would professionalism because he doesn't want to do the pro day. Because of this. Would I take neighbors would over neighbors, Harrison? Because yeah. of this? The same neighbors yeah. that didn't want to get, along with Jaden Daniels, didn't want to get measured at the combine? I mean, it's like they all, they all manage this in their own way. They got a lot of people that like neighbors over Harrison anyway within the league that, yeah, that's uh, and, and in the scouting community that actually prefer. Why that's is that weird? Because neighbors weird. then go it's to just, Ohio State? Why and is that I'm weird? just saying, no, it's just strange. Go to Ohio strange. State? Like, uh, look, look. Okay, why is that I, I just, this is what I want to know. So, if you're a scout, so you're, you're, you, 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 you're, you are a broadcaster. Whether you like it or not, you're a broadcaster, Michael Smith. You're a media person. And you're a media person in March. And you're a media person in June, and you're a media mm-hmm. person in December. You are. A year, it is a. We are a national organization. Uh, this is a full time job. So where was this? Where was this during the season? I, Malik Neighbors. If it was there, if it, it yeah, if it was there. there. Is, it was tearing I, up I the SEC. I, okay. I, where, yeah, it was where, there. Where? Who do you where? think Jaden Daniels was throwing yeah. to? He wasn't throwing it to himself. No, <laughs> like, I didn't know hear this. Him and Brian Tom. Oh, you know, Neighbors is the best. The people said neighbors the best wide receiver in the country during the season. Really? People said he got robbed from winning the Belinda. Outside call. of he should have won the Belinda. Outside Belinda of call. Baton Rouge and not Marvin Harrison. Outside of home team, outside of your state. That sounds real. You know what? That sounds real elitist coming from an Ohio guy. That sounds real elitist and real like like you're talking down your nose at me. Like outside of Baton Rouge, like getting like a little fake Cajun accent on it. Like, 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 we, like we all know football. I wasn't trying to do that. Like, I wasn't trying that's, to that's do that. That's what I was picking up. That's what it was giving. That's what it was giving. It was giving condescension. I don't even know giving. how to do it. I don't even know okay. how to do a fake one. Like, no, right. no. Like people, people been peeping games on my league name. It's just, it's a matter of preference. He's great. Matter of preference. They had two. They had two great receivers in Neighbors and Thomas, and at oh, all year long. Here we go. Here we they go. Did, they here had we go. two great receivers. And a Heisman, and a Heisman Trophy winning quarterback, right? You about to do the thing where you say that Neighbors ain't as good because he had Thomas on the other side, and he had Jaden Daniels, whereas no, I'm saying Marvin Harrison Jr. was subjected to Kyle I'm McCord. I'm saying they're both good. Oh, okay. I'm saying they're oh, both. Yeah, all, they are. all yeah. three of them. Yeah. All three yeah. of them are good. Oh, shame on you, Chris. Mm-hmm. Anyway, um, <laughs> I, I'm saying all three of those guys: <laughs> Neighbors, Thomas. And Jaden Daniels, who's going to the Bears, um, but all those guys, <laughs> all those guys are great players. But I just don't remember anybody saying neighbors and Thomas. Oh, so now Thomas is better. He's the junior. He's the better junior. Thomas is the better junior, not Harrison. <laughs> Come on, I, just, I didn't hear this. This is fun. This is fun. This is fun. Well, because you know, guys haven't had time to really get into the film, you know. Okay. You know, That's why I say full process. Time. It's a full time job. Play it out. It's a full time <laughs> job. You're a scout. You gotta do the job all the time. You can't just do it, you know, during silly season. You gotta be a scout. No, but I mean, you know, but you're getting more. You're getting more information. You're looking closer at the film. You're talking to people. Oh, you're, you're, sure. you know, talking to it's different. You know, combine. You're getting more, more, more test results and whatnot. Speaking of the combine, like so again, Marvin Harrison. It's like, you know. 
he doesn't run or the pro day, if he doesn't run a, a four or five, then people are questioning him. Whereas it's like, you know, you got guys that were training for the 40. You know what I mean? And yeah. not necessarily you know, training for a 40 time in a way that's going to translate to football, if that makes sense. So uh, yeah. I got no issue with Marvin Harrison uh, not doing his pro day. Um, nobody hey. will remember this when he's a, you know, an all pro and, and all his way to the Hall of Fame. Following well, right. that. Oh, you let me right there. You let me. You, hmm. Did you see this? It was going around uh, the last couple of days with the a retirement announcement of Aaron Donald. The scouting uh, report, the scouting oh, report yeah. of Aaron Donald. He's a yeah. tweener, you know, really, you know, not big enough to play inside, maybe not strong enough or fast enough to play outside, really struggles uh, against bigger opponents. He can get pushed <laughs> around, you know, all this. Thing. He's going to struggle. In there. You can run at him, all these things. Okay. Come on. Don't <laughs> overthink it. Don't overthink it. We've seen it. We, we know it. It's uh, the best receiver in the class. Ooh. In case you missed it, run this back during the season. Why? The best receiver in the class clearly is Marvin Harrison Jr. Just like I told you last year, clearly? the best quarterback clearly okay. is Marvin clearly. Harrison Jr. And the best quarterback last year, I told you when you were doing yeah. the uh, my man Michael Smith sitting down with Bryce Young, having a great more conversation. Condes- more about condescension. And- more he condescension. Was, he was more. Condes- more- Sarcasm he, there. he was a CEO. He was a CEO there in that conversation. Really like, oh, yeah, this guy, Bryce Young. And I told you, best quarterback. Best, maybe not the best interview, but pretty good interview, too. Best quarterback, CJ Stroud. Thank you. Take it from me. Okay. I'm just trying right. to help you. Right, listen, you, you know, you, you, if you know one thing, you know your Buckeyes. No, no bias. No bias. Your objective analysis. Marvin Harrison is clearly better than Malik Neighbors. Okay. All good. No, no worries. No best worries. I will, ta- I, will, I will take that. I will take that. I will take that. I'm the- sorry. And yeah. Brian. <laughs> and Brian. <laughs> <Thomas Jr. laughs> there you go. Here you go. Okay. You know the last time. Okay. You know the last time. You know. You know the last time you did this. Last time you went down this road of making a mistake. I know. Talking shit about an LSU receiver. You remember the last guy you did this with? I know. Remember the guy yeah. that you didn't think should Jamar be the fifth Chase. pick? Remember the guy then, that you didn't think could catch because of the preseason? Remember that, Michael? I told okay. you the story, too. Okay. I told you the story. Like, I was going off on, on Jamar Chase. And then when I was covering, when I was assigned to the Bengals, the Super Bowl, they're out at UCLA. And I'm walking around the field just looking for players to talk to. And I see a guy I say, oh, what linebacker is that? I don't know that guy. And I looked, <laughs> went, went closer. And it was Jamar Chase. I'm like, dude, if I had never seen this dude in person, <laughs> I never would have. I never would have clowned. Yeah. I never would have doubted anything. Woo. Yeah. Uh, LSU fascinating. receivers. It, you usually don't. It's, there's no cottage industry that exists of making fun of LSU wide receivers because no. it's not good. Conversely, business. right. Conversely, it's smart business to take one. Same as Ohio State. Uh, real, real quick, I want to ask you. Um, just keep your Homer hat on for a second. What you think of this uh, JJ McCarthy buzz about him being a top five pick about the Vikings or the Giants or somebody moving up to get JJ McCarthy? Like, he's like, it feels like this is a this is that rare projection at quarterback. And by projection, I mean like the productivity yes. was not oh, there just took the word. in that college. Was the like, word I was gonna use. But there, but there's always a projection, like you know, whether it's a system or a scheme. But this one is like. Yeah, he didn't throw the ball a lot because that's, you know, because Jim Harbaugh, because they, you know, they run the ball a lot. But when he did, he was fantastic. And his skill set, his tools, his intangibles translate well to the NFL. Do you see it that way? Obviously, you you saw this guy very closely in the Big Ten. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't see that. Top I didn't five? see that at, at Michigan. But I just want to say, in, in his defense, and all these quarterbacks that we're talking about, especially the guys, if you want to add him to the mix, uh, McCarthy, uh, Jaden Daniels, Drake May, obviously Caleb Williams, it's not, none of them came out of nowhere. I mean, these guys were all five-star great recruits out of high school, all of them. Uh, and so it's not like they're inventing McCarthy, but the, Michigan didn't play that way. You Michigan play like most... Jim Harbaugh teams play. Played the same way mm-hmm. at Stanford. Played the same way at San Francisco. Just offensive right. linemen who just wear you out. And, and right. running backs who just, just all 
it's, it's a running play. You know it's a running play, but there are like eight different running plays and you really can't stop it and the, and the line wears you down. So he really didn't have to do anything like Caleb Williams did or Jaden Daniels did. It is a major projection to see him as a top five guy. I'm not going to say he can't do it. I'm just saying I didn't see that. I, mm. If you are a if you're an Ohio State fan or Michigan State fan or anybody else who hates Michigan, you didn't fear him. You didn't mm. fear McCarthy. That, that wasn't it. You, you respected him, but not one of those guys who said, well, we got to fi- we got to figure out a way because McCarthy is just going to slice us up or McCarthy's going to make some play. Not really. So maybe maybe he's uh, maybe he's unlocked and unleashed away from Michigan. And as I told you before, Speaking of- wouldn't be the first time. Well, that brings me right Hello? to uh, what I wanted to Hello? what else I want to talk to you about. Um, don't be disappointed in, in your goddaughter. Uh, but you know, Michigan's at the top of her list, right? She didn't apply to Ohio State that I'm aware of, but Michigan is at the top of she her did list. Not. Near the top of her list. She did not apply to the Michigan's Ohio State. Michigan's a great school. It's but a she great is school. interested and in I, Michigan. And I hear they like recently really developed their football program, so that's great. But it is a <laughs> it is an academic powerhouse. So I am, She's got a I long, am so happy. I'm happy for her. She, apl- she applied, but you know, the process is ongoing. She applied to, um, I want to say like almost 20 schools. So she's still waiting for some uh, decisions. She wants to get all the information before making a final decision. But yesterday was big. Yesterday was big, Mike. Um, I spent yesterday in D.C. briefly. Uh, we took an official tour at Howard. And so Howard... I'm gonna connect this to the the first four. Howard losing to Wagner last night, uh, the way that they did with those three missed threes uh, right at the end, it hit different already. Now I did not attend an HBCU. My high school was HBCU practically. I didn't. T- I did not attend an HBCU. I obviously did not attend Howard. But let's just say Michael and Sarah Smith are rooting for Savannah to attend Howard. Uh, and therefore, I was rooting for Howard uh, in the first four last night. Um, it's just crazy, man. Like to to be on a college tour with my daughter. Um, wow. Life has been life. Life has been right lifing here. lately. Life has been lifing for your boy lately, and coming at me yeah. fast. Um, and so, just walking that campus, man. It's a special place. As everybody who you know and I know from Howard describes it, it's a special place. Last time I've been on Howard's campus. I did a show from there years and years ago. Uh, we took a show on the road uh, to Howard's campus uh, for their homecoming. But um, it's a special place, and I really think it made an impression. I really think it made it. I mean, because it's at, it's at the top of her list as well. It's one of her finalists. Um, but I really think being there and, 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 and feeling that energy and just, you know, just black excellence as far as the eye can see, um, Stepping on, on, stepping into the Mecca, uh, walking the yard. I think those things, like, I think it, she's not going to say it because she like, she like to play things close to the vest or is it the chest? Either yeah. one. Um, she, uh, she, you know, because she wants, she wants to be her decision. So I had to be careful with like how much I encouraged her, you know, did she about ask going you, to Howard. Did she ask you, like I'm about to ask you, what did you think what? of the Mecca? Did she ask you that question? Well, she didn't have to, I, cause I was, yeah, I volunteered it. You know what I mean? <laughs> I was, but I was more like, you could see yourself going here, right? And I'm giving all the reasons why she should choose the HBCU experience to say nothing well, of the fact that you, it's. Though? I mean, it's like you said, it's a special place. Well, like, give honestly, me, a, me going, me going, me going. No, but but I'll be honest with you, man. Me going to Howard yesterday was similar to like a Caleb Williams pro day. Like I already knew what I needed to know. Like it just confirmed it. Like I mean, Howard would have, it had to been some shit going on at Howard yesterday to change my mind about that being the school that I wanted to go to, because because it, it, it was like selling a Mercedes. Like you know, it's, it's like going to Louis Vuitton and having somebody having to sell you something. Like no, I went to Howard. I already know about the education. I already know about the alumni network. I already know about the history of that place. I already know about um, the, the 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 trailblazers and the world changers that have walked those halls. I mean. You know, it's D.C. I mean, I, it was nothing yesterday that was going to convince me. But obviously, I just want her to be happy and go where she wants to go. She's also, you know, there's this she had that same mindset that I had when I was going to college because I grew up watching a different world. Uh, so I always thought that and I've, and I've had this conversation with her. I always thought that college, 
you know, was I had to go far away and across the country and, you know, struggle on my own. I had to be hungry and like wear clothes three times before I washed them and that sort of thing. I, I, I didn't, I didn't know. I, 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 and then I ended up going to Loyola, New Orleans and living on campus and I was, it felt like I was a world away anyway. So, you know, part of her wants to go to the Midwest or to the West Coast and, you know, just experience a completely different lifestyle and pace. But, you know, D.C., man, I mean, D.C. is nothing like Connecticut, obviously. It's still the East Coast. Right. We can reach out and touch her, as the old folks say, which is another funny thing. It's like, well, like in case something happened. Well, if something happened, this shit has already happened. Don't matter how far away we are, it's already happened. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, but for the happened. grace of God, go I, right? You know, but anyway, it's nice to have her uh, a quick flight uh, from Hartford away. So, that's yeah, man, that's what, we, that's what we pulling for. But just the experience of being a father and walking my oldest child on the um, the Howard campus uh, for a college tour, I was just like, damn, where did the time go? Where has the time gone? But um, but like I said, it's the little things. Wow. Just like Mike Williams, like, like a, a couple, sandwich. The, a couple months the tour away from graduation. Guide, yeah, not, yeah. I mean, I'm trying to I'm trying not to think about that. I don't know how I'm gonna keep it together. But the tour guy was talking about the coffee cakes in this coffee shop. Like sometimes it's the little things. And I told her, I told her wherever you go, wherever you go is what you make it. I just talked to a couple of young men the other day who wanted to get into the, in the broadcast and into journalism. And, you know, I was talking to them about, like, they were talking about college choices or whatever. I'm like, man, I went to Loyola, New Orleans. You know, you went to Point Park College. You weren't even university at the time. It's like, it's what yeah. you make it, you know? And, and, and no it's, what, it's taking advantage of the opportunities presented to you when you're there. And so um, that's what I was telling them. Like, no matter what, because it could be stressful for them, too. And, you know, because they think they don't have the benefit of hindsight like we do. Cause, so they think like this is the biggest decision in their lives. I think about the blue chips, uh, not blue chips. Uh, he got game montage. This will be the biggest decision of your life. It's like no, not really, not really. You make it. There's right. no wrong decision. You make it's a, a big decision, decision and you make now, it right. But there, there'll be others. You're right, 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 exactly. Yeah, you make a decision, you make it right. But if 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 uh, my wife and I had our druthers, she'd be at. H U, you know? Can I say that? Even though I ain't go to Howard, can I? Am I allowed to yeah, say, yeah, that? Is say that? Is that kind of like? Go ahead, and say it. Is that kind of like say you know? It, you can't, it. you can't, you can't dance with the Omegas and the Kappas. You can't, you know, you can't do the, you know, you can't do none of that stuff. You ain't in it. I ain't go to Howard, but my money might be going to Howard. So you know. That counts. <laughs> so that yeah, counts. that counts, doesn't it? Right. Okay, of, good, good. You are officially part of the network. You are, you that, are a part yeah. of the system now. Yeah. And I'm gonna say, but it was, it was fun. H U. Michigan, H-U, that's what, Michigan. That's, 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 that, that's where I'm at. With, I, I agree. I agree. I, I, that's where I'm at with it, you know. But you'll be there soon, man. You'll be there very soon, I'm telling you. It's, uh, it's, it's something. It was, it, was a, it was definitely a proud moment for your boy. It was a, it was a proud moment for me. So uh, I'll keep you well, posted, great, though. Man. I'll keep you posted on the Congratulations, on the Ed. Let us know. Yeah, Let us know. You. She gonna have a she gonna have a reveal. Gonna have the hats out. Gonna have a few different hats. Some <laughs> no. sweatshirts. Some hoodies. So. I don't think. Yeah. Have I'll three of them out a, there. I don't think she's gonna announce what she's taking her talents, but and that's the other thing I told her. Wherever she goes, I'm gonna be lucky to have her. You know, there's a whole. Lot, I don't even let her use the word rejection when it comes to applications. Um, I don't even let her use that word. I say you were redirected. And you know I like to say that. You weren't rejected, you were redirected. And mm -hmm. so, like, wherever she goes, it's going to be lucky to have her. And, and, and she's going to do great things regardless, you know? So, well, it was not my plan to stay in New Orleans for college, but look how it all turned out. Now we'll change the thing. Um, all right, let's take this break, it, man. Yeah, to bring it full circle, I'm yeah. glad you're an involved dad. I'm glad right. you're too involved. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man, let's get Natalie involved in, uh, let's, let's write this comment section back, shall we? Let's do that. comment section in a long time. Cool. Michael, like you, I am just here for these comments. Natalie is here. <laughs> she is always in the comment section, either reading them or replying to them. She holds it down and keeps it real. <laughs> Natalie got two jobs here at Brother From Another. She holds it down and she keeps it real. Um, Managing our social media accounts among her many duties, among her many uh, roles and responsibilities here, this fine operation. Uh, so Natalie, as always, got some stuff to say. She's got her ear to the street, so she has heard you. She got thoughts. She got takes. Natalie, take it away. What's on your mind first? <laughs> 
Well, you were talking about, both of you were talking about Justin Fields the other day, because we know that he's going to the Steelers. And you were having a larger conversation about kind of what type of quarterback he is, whether it's too early to call him a bust or not. But Michael, you said something, Michael Smith, you said something that I thought was interesting, and I was like, let me see what you know the streets think. So you you mentioned that um, he's the best running quarterback you know that you've seen in your lifetime. I'm paraphrasing, but everyone can see your quote on the mm -hmm. screen. So we put it up, posted it, ran some polls to see what people think. Was it and was it provocative? Get <laughs> yeah. the people going. It did. <laughs> it did. And you know, I thought like to me, I was just like, really? I, you know, I didn't. I don't know that I really strongly disagreed with it, but I just never heard anyone say that, you know? And I, I, if I recall, um, Holly's original reaction on the show was like, oh, you know, sort of like two, it kind of made both of us react. So that's why I kind of wanted to test it, you know, with, with people, but they definitely did not agree with you, uh, Mike Smith. Oh. So we- wow. <laughs> Shocker. <laughs> Certainly not we, the first time. We ran a few well, polls, but based on one of the ones we ran, the overwhelming favorite was, was Mike Vick. And that's largely what the comments were saying. They were just like, come on, Michael Vick ran so he could walk. Mike Vick, Mike Vick, Mike Vick. <laughs> so there was, a, there was a lot of Mike Vick, right? Right, um, right? But some of the interesting ones or just things that I thought were notable that also came up, people said, you forgetting about Colin Kaepernick. A lot of mentions of Randall Cunningham. Um, yeah. You know, um, our friend Rita, a friend of the show, said he's not even currently the best running, um, you know, quarterback in the NFL. So uh, lots of reactions. So I want to throw it back to you because I, I posted your rationale for it to make sure people got the context. Yeah. Well, but you know, you know, they ain't read that. No, they didn't. They didn't. They didn't watch it. Someone yeah, asked how old you were. Yeah. They asked how old you were. <laughs> so. Old enough to, whoever asked that question, I'm old enough to be your daddy. <laughs> so throwing oh, it back two, to you. And, 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 wait, and as Tupac said in Juice, I would have been your daddy, but the line was too long. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Was, no, was, it's all good. Hey, I'm just curious, I'm, yeah. Have your yeah. has your position changed based on any of the, the, the comments I said? And what do you think about some of the other names that were up for consideration, both of you? I mean, of, I mean, of course I consider them. I didn't just pull that out of my ass. I know you didn't. No, I know you didn't. I, I, know, you're not, I know you know, but mm -hmm. I mean, it's like, have I, how old am I? Have I forgotten? <laughs> oh, I, I've seen all of these guys. I've covered most of these guys. Like, I would challenge anybody. And if anything, because I, 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 I do have some humility to myself, contrary to what you may think. Um, I, if anything, I could have maybe been a little bit more precise maybe a little bit more precise in saying dynamic talent as opposed to just better. Because they got guys that have done it longer, have better numbers, have scored more touchdowns, yeah. rushing, body of work as a running quarterback, uh, would certainly surpass that of Justin Fields. But I would challenge anybody to find me a better combination of size, strength, speed, and elusiveness at the quarterback position. Like, of course I experienced, of course I experienced Michael Vick. And I played Madden 04. You know, yeah. probably, probably got a bunch of people commenting that ain't, that ain't, that ain't, that played Madden 04 and that's all they know about Michael Vick anyway. It's like I played Madden. I, obviously I know what Colin Kaepernick did, okay? But what I'm saying is, Michael Vick was little. He was fast. He was Barry Sanders. Yeah, Barry Sanders feet with Dan Marino's arm. He was little, he was fast. Lamar Jackson, is not this physical a runner. Now, I'm not saying he's not physical. He's not this physical but a runner. Yeah. Colin Kaepernick was running yes. away from people. Justin Fields, right. in terms of his size, speed, and elusiveness, the package is what I was talking about. The package. Right. I grew up with Randall Cunningham. Randall Cunningham stopped. I told y'all the story before. Randall Cunningham ended my Saints fandom. I'm not going to waste time getting into the whole story. But, like, no, I didn't forget about any of these people. Put that chart back and up. Maybe Justin, Put that chart maybe back Justin up. There. But maybe Justin Fields. What he was doing in 2022, what he showed flashes yeah. of in 2022 for a stretch, I, again, size, speed, strength, elusiveness, I don't think we've seen that in one, all of that to this level in one rushing quarterback or one, right. or one quarter. And, and to me, the crime was that the Bears didn't let him do it more often. Go ahead, Mike. Mike, you covered Tobin Rote. How was Tobin Rote as a, as a dynamic <laughs> Man, runner? Uh, because he was a bitch to tackle, let me tell you. Was he? Was he? I bet he was. 
All right, listen, listen. I, I have no issues with the statement from Michael Smith. If you consider context, and I'm gonna add some more context, Natalie. Okay. Everybody on this list, I can't speak for Tobin Rowe. Okay, I can't speak for him, in all seriousness. But everybody on this list is a threat as a passer. You had to fear them as a passer, which made their running more of a weapon because you weren't sure they could dice you up with their arm or with their legs. Justin Fields can't pass. And he's still a da- he's still a damn good running quarterback and he can't throw the ball. He can't throw the ball from me to you. And he still is a major threat as a runner. So look, all the other, everybody else, you like Colin Kaepernick, yes, and Randall Cunningham. I love the Randall Cunningham callback. But for combination, sure. if you consider everything that the, that person is doing, the quarterback is doing, yeah, I have no I'm, issue with uh, Justin Fields. But I'm, Fields. I'm strictly, I am strictly talking about, because I mean, you know, if you want to talk about like, there's running quarterbacks and there's scramblers. You know, there's the Fran, there's all the way back to Fran Tarkenton. There's again, baddest mofo for my money, 1990s peak Steve Young. There's Steve Young as a, as a running quarterback. There's a lot of, like Dante Culpepper can move. There's a lot of guys that can move that were threats running the football. I mean, I don't even think Cam Newton Cam, is on Cam this Newton list. Cam Newton should be on there. Because he, yeah, he, he probably, but he didn't, he didn't have, he wasn't among the most rushing yards. Cam is the he, best nobody, goal line. Cam, Cam right. might be the best goal line runner from the quarterback position. Nobody's, nobody's had more games with a rushing and a passing touchdown than Cam Newton. I mean, so, and I'm not even talking about dual threat. To your point, Michael, you're talking about dual threat. Like, who's, who's as dangerous a passer as they are a runner? I'm strictly talking about the physical talent and, and how dynamic a runner Justin Fields is at his size with his strength. He's 6'3", 230, you know, Ooh. running away from people and running over people as, as, as needed. I'm, and and it, we didn't see enough of it from Chicago, and that's the disappointment. But, Natalie, I appreciate it, because I, I can take the smoke. I can take the smoke, you know, so like I don't, I don't mind it. Like I'm used to be, I'm used to being ahead. You know what I mean? It's, it's hard. It's hard when you're the first one. Oh, here we go. You know, it's hard when you're the first one. You know, you gotta, you gotta take the criticism, and then two, three years from now, when everybody's saying it, it's like, oh, you know. But I'm not gonna say, I'm not gonna say, I told you so, though, Mike. I'm not gonna say that. I'm gonna okay. just let no, it be you understood. Won't, you wouldn't do Because Natalie was understood, need not be spoken. So I'm gonna stop speaking and let you go back to doing your thing. What else, Natalie? What's on your mind? <laughs> okay. Well, look, like I said, Mike Vick is the one who won the poll. Oh, hold on. But wait, we need another poll. Sorry to interrupt you. We need another poll. Everybody, we were talking about this before we came on camera. Poll. Does Natalie look like Shaka Khan? Oh, Lord. Okay, that, that is on. <laughs> put, put that on the poll. That's the next poll. Okay. We are not putting up a poll with that. <laughs> no, we're not gonna do that. All right, all right. Okay, that's that, go ahead. I'm sorry. I just wanted to. Wanted to yeah, go ahead. Okay. And then she wait. And then she flipped the hair. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. What you got? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Well, listen. Just to wrap up our convo, Mike Vick was the winner of the poll. Like of I course, said, that seems course. to be the person who most people are leaning. And yeah, I don't I don't feel strongly about this, but I think my instinct is Mike Vick as well. Um, but sure. I'm wondering if a lot of that is about just Mike's influence in general on the game. Right. And how people feel Nostalgia. about Mike, Mike, oh, Vick, for, right. Yes. And yes. so that brings yes. me to sort of like the next thing that's kind of being discussed right now because of a new podcast that uh, LeBron James and J.J. Redick. Um, just put out um, mind the game it's on um, uninterrupted LeBron's you know brand and they were talking about uh, most influential NBA players and this is a debate that comes up a lot on NBA Twitter Um, so in part I love the discussion for a lot of reasons we'll get to that but um, they they LeBron cited two, and now a lot of people are talking about it so um, let's hear what LeBron and JJ had to say when it comes to influence, since, since I've been watching the game, since I've been watching the game, the most influence on the game, and obviously we know what Mike did for the game. Sure. You know, well, Steph and Allen Iverson are the, the two biggest influential guys in our game since, since I've been watching and covering it. I have an arm sleeve because of Allen Iverson. <laughs> like, I'm no, no bullshit. Listen. No bullshit. One of my tattoos is because of Allen Iverson. For like, sure. I, and Steph, I think he changed, like the influence with Steph, I think is like he fundamentally changed how we viewed how the game should be played mm-hmm. with the three point shot. Yeah. So I think JJ nails it. And um, 
like I said, this is debated a lot. So this was a list though that Complex put out back in 2022, mm -hmm. and it still seems to be the one that's referenced a lot. Um, and this is their top 10 list of most influential players. But, you know, I think the question that this raised for me that I wanted to throw at you both is, what's the criteria that we're using? And that's Complex, exactly right. Complex, exactly right. they had a yes, list of criteria the that they that's proposed the for this list. Um, because I thought that JJ Reddick really nailed it when he said what steps influences and a lot of times there are these lists that float around Twitter and the Mount Rushmore of who's most influential. And typically the four people you see are Jordan, Braun, Steph, and um, Jordan, Braun, Steph, and Kobe. And then there's always people who react and they say, what about AI? What about Allen Iverson? And I think, you know, when you're talking about a cultural influence, like affecting the culture, how people dress. And I mean, there's a level of how they played the game. Some of that um, Allen Iverson stuff, it was, you know, the and one movement to all of that. But I think like there's no, um, there's no doubt in who like Allen Iverson's influence. But I think often when we're talking about his influence, it is the cultural influence that he had. Correct. But when Correct. you're talking about influence in terms of who impacted the game, I definitely agree that like, I think Steph Curry has to be up there as one of the top people. He's revolutionized the game, the way that the yeah. game is played. And so, um, you know, that's my opinion. When I think of influence, I just think influence also means like not just, oh, well, you are great and you're a great player and you're transcendent. Influence to me is like things are changing because of you. People are trying to mimic yeah. you. They're trying to Correct. do what you do. And so I think Steph has to be definitely up there. I'm not saying that there aren't others, but I think there's two different kinds of influence that we're talking about. And I think sometimes yeah. this conversation gets conflated together. So with that said, I wanted to ask you both, like I said, like what criteria would you use and how do you kind of evaluate Allen Iverson's influence and Steph Curry's influence? Yeah, I'll, I'll make this quick. Again, I've, I've said this before, even as yeah. long-winded as I am, as a, as the grandson of a, of a Baptist pastor, I don't preach after somebody else has already preached. Um, <laughs> so I, I, there's really there's really nothing for me to add or counter. I, I think you laid it out perfectly. Um, yeah. I think you have to be specific with the type of influence you're talking about because Michael Jordan's influence was different from Iverson's and Steph's. Not that there wasn't some crossover. Uh, I honestly, Natalie, I don't think it's much of a debate when you talk about like the game. I mean, it's literally he did a, he did a, a Facebook, I believe it was, project called Steph versus the game. I don't think it's a debate. I don't I don't know that there's any. I don't think he's just up there. I don't know if there's anybody who has changed the the modern game and the right. way it's played, not just at the professional level, but the way it's played at the at the the, the amateur and the AAU and the youth level more than Steph and Curry. And I think it really just comes down to. And as much as it frustrates coaches, and I put, I put air quotes for me, coaches, but coaches, it's like people think they can do what Steph did. People thought they could be what Allen Iverson was from a basketball standpoint even. Like Allen Iverson's crossover is one of the most iconic moves, right. not just him crossing over Jordan, but his crossover dribble period, one of the most iconic moves. But this little dude, this little tough son of a gun going up against these trees, putting his body on the line, from a basketball standpoint, just like how people played the game, Iverson was your favorite player's favorite player. Yeah. And so a lot of people tried to mimic his moves, mimic it, mimic the way he handled the ball, mimic the way he drove and attacked, but because they could see and some of themselves picture, in and Iverson. And that picture there too. This is a part of it too. The pictures, uh, you know, yeah, so how Iverson he dresses. Iverson well, that's with different. the headband. But no, I'm, but yeah. I'm, I'm sure you're talking basketball wise. I'm sure you're talking okay, basketball, not you. cultural. Not the intersection of hip hop and basketball, not his fashion, not his rebel image that he had at one point. I remember when David Stern had his, uh, I think it was David Stern, rest in peace, had his tattoos airbrushed. You know what I mean? Like we've come a long way from yeah. when they were trying to sanitize Allen Iverson. But I'm just strictly talking about at their Oops. size, and Steph, Steph is 6'3", yeah. he, he ain't small, but at their size, they're more easily, quote unquote, able to impact the game because more people have a realistic shot of approximating Steph Curry. Like you could convince yourself that you could be Steph Curry on an Allen Iverson if you work hard enough. If you work hard <laughs> enough, you can convince yourself. You can't grow to be six eight and two sixty. You know, you can't grow to be seven foot three. You can't be Wimby. 
Like, but people have convinced themselves, and it fr- that's what I was saying, it frustrates coaches that kids think they can be Steph Curry is that Steph Curry not only is gifted, but Steph Curry has spent countless hours perfecting his craft. So from a basketball, the game standpoint, I don't think it's any comparison to what Steph Curry has done. And Michael, I'll let you take the cultural part because I'm sure we see it the same way with Allen Iverson. Well, Only other person well, I put not, in the conversation like, is Kobe. It's Kobe. Yeah. I think Kobe, Kobe culturally yeah. and the way the game is played, I, you, you cannot have an influence conversation without Kobe Bryant because the whole generation. Well, I would say this. For, see, and he, I feel like there, MJ Michael. is in there too. I'm sorry, but I, because of the oh, sneaker sure. culture. Because of sneakers, yeah, of right? Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and sneakers, <clears throat> his hair, like the bald head, the shorts. The socks, sure. everything with MJ, all that. It, it, it was it was the way he dressed going to games. They didn't always dress like that because when he kept, when he started, MJ I'm talking about as a rookie, we had track suits and gold chains, and which is fine. And then he changed to he more of a corporate look in the suits and the tailored yeah. thing and the, you know in the tie and all this stuff. So he changed that. In terms well. of moving weight, in, ear, in terms of in, in terms earrings. of moving weight, as influencing corporate America is Michael Jordan yeah. and everybody else. Yeah, it, 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 as silly as it sounds, everybody got an earring now. Everybody wears earrings. That was not the case in 1988, 89 when Jordan started doing 1990. You wouldn't see yeah. NBA players like that. They had gone the other way, and Jordan brought that little piece in, and then AI and others took it to the next level. But I'll say this, uh, Natalie. He says he's the grandson uh, of a Baptist preacher. And all these preachers say, kinda, yeah. as I go to my seat, and then as 10 I minutes go to my later, seat, as I still close, preaching. yeah, I still, right. I still don't so like to say. So he said he wasn't gonna preach, and he still preach. I'll make it. I, I really will make it quick. I'm gonna, st- I'm gonna say with basketball, and some of the people, I'm gonna argue with you and say they don't belong on the basketball list. Okay. All right. If you go back, Jordan, you're right, Natalie. Go back to 1986, that 63 point, 63 point game Jordan had against the Celtics. It's weird to watch the game. I did this a few years ago. If you watch the game, it's like Michael Jordan is from another era against the Celtics who were the championship team that year. They were the standard. They were a great team. They lost one game at home all year and they almost lost that game to the Bulls. But Michael Jordan was playing a completely different game against the Celtics and nobody had seen anybody play like that before. So 1986 is one of those markers for transcendence. Go back uh, 1979 in hip hop and in basketball. 1979 Sugar Hill Gang. 1979 Michael uh, uh, Magic Johnson and Larry Bird. Six nine guys who were throwing, who were passing it and shooting and rebounding. Hadn't seen that. That's why I mm. don't put LeBron on the list. Mm. I don't put LeBron on the list because he was Magic Johnson stronger and faster. But I didn't see anything from LeBron. If I'm being honest. They hadn't seen before, but it was just the prodigy. The genius of LeBron is obvious, but the way the game is played, nah. But Steph, oh wow. Think about 2011, 2012, how the game was played. And then think about Steph in 2014, 2015. No question. A different era, a different well, style, different defense, different everything because of Steph. So I'm yeah. I'm going. He broke the I'm, game. I, yeah, give me your you're about to list, but give me your Rushmore. I want both of your Rushmores really quick. Your Rushmore of most influential. I got one missing, cause I just I okay there you go. I got okay Bird Magic, Jordan, AI. I mean I mean uh, and Steph. So Bird's not on the list. I think Bird should be on the list. Since okay. 1980, since 1979. So Bird, Bird Magic. And Magic Jordan and then Steph. In that order. Or or just Rushmore. Not, not necessarily okay. in that order. Okay. No, no. What Bird about you, Magic, Mike? Jordan stuff. Um well, and all for different reasons. Which that's why this is such a rabbit hole. This is such a rabbit hole because it's like I could argue LeBron's influence. So, all right, because again, Natalie, like you said on top, how do you define influence? And it's just it's just like, hey, 10 greatest players ever. It's like, well, wait a second. What but you stuck it. On, you right? kept it the basketball, though. You kept no, it the I, basketball. No, just, just in, just in my not, comments. Just in my comment. Yeah. But if we're broadening it out. It is a rabbit like, hole. If we bring in culture and all that stuff, then it switches. But basketball well, right, right. Le- LeBron, LeBron politically, uh, academically, um, 
socially, culturally, um, uh, you know, corporately. LeBron is up there with in, with anybody, right? Which is obviously why he's number two on his list. I think. I think you. Could, I think Magic has both. Magic influencing the way the game is played, the prototypical point guard, but also his influence in society, you know, at large, and and, and just Jordan and this is Jordan and his is brand. A, same again, same with yeah. Jordan. But I, I mean. I think there's also mentality as well. I think LeBron's influence, you know, how many guys wanted to make the right basketball play the way that LeBron always did and be, and, and be this incredible passer and, and teammate magic. that LeBron supposedly yeah. is. No, I got it. I'm saying Bird, but, magic. Kids, so, I mean, I'm like, talking it's about, not but, new. But all those, no, I'm not saying it's new. It doesn't have to be new. It doesn't have to be innovative. You know, it, it, I'm saying there are people yes, who does. did not watch me. There are people who didn't watch Magic and Larry. Michael, there are people who did not grow up watching Magic and Larry, but watched LeBron and tried to emulate LeBron. So emulation no, is a form no, of influence. No, that, but that's a different, but Michael, I think that's a different conversation. If you're saying... That's what I'm saying. It has I'm, I'm, I'm saying something different than what you're saying. I'm saying okay. that LeBron okay. James, his influence, it, it's not limited to, you know, his I promise school. It's not limited to, you influence, know, his political you put, statements. Are you putting... Influence and innovation and in separate categories? Yes. I'm saying it, I'm, okay, I, that's what I let off by saying. I'm saying okay. I'm saying influence has many different definitions, which I, th- which I think is a central thesis of this conversation. Because yeah. LeBron's mentality and LeBron, the way the LeBron sees and approaches the game, hence this podcast, I think has been influential in its own right. I'm not saying he's yeah. Diff- and he's all and he is different from 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 Michael uh, from Magic Johnson. They're not the same player. They have, they have, they have similarities, more similarities than differences. But he's different from Magic Johnson. But yeah, like LeBron, I said, you can't. I think, and, and I'm not disagreeing. I'm not disagreeing. Yeah. I may ask you both. Let me ask you both. Um, I'll give you my, my rush more in a second. From from a from a just basketball because I get the cultural. I agree with everything you said about you know cultural influence and all this stuff. Did LeBron do anything that changed the way you thought about basketball for you, for either of you? Like the way ooh, I, I never thought, thought, about thought that was possible. I, I, I never thought that was possible until I saw LeBron do it. He's the most, he's he the most changed. versatile player ever. He's the most, he's the most versatile player at both ends ever. Uh, arguably, I'll, I'll qualify, but I don't think I have question, to. Though. So yes, no, question. yes. I never thought somebody Justin Fields. I never, I never thought I'd see somebody that big, that fast, that strong, that skilled, and that versatile in one package of a player. I, so, so the answer, the simple answer is yes. But what I'm saying in terms of like the most influence, versatile LeBron, player ever, you may, Magic played every position, played center <laughs> in a championship game, and got 42 points and 15 rebounds. I, like what? Dude, a, and a point guard. This is, a guy who could play point and center? They're, That's look, versatile. Dude. Not, he was an all-league Le, defender, Le, Le, LeBron, second team LeBron, league. Pl- LeBron plays them all and defends them all and has he a plays, more evolved game center? than Magic did. He plays center. Play, he has played. Yes, shit, yeah, he's played center. Not he in the NBA center. finals, but... Yes, he's playing right, center. Michael. All right, all right, but this okay. is a conversation about influence, no, not but versatility. I, wait, I'm gonna get, I'm a, I know, I'm gonna get, but, I'm, but, no, but, but Michael, Michael trying to be argumentative and whatnot. He's trying to poke no, the bear. Saying, well, the bear is the poked. most versatile player ever. That's a bigger statement than Justin Fields, a quarterback. It's not. That's no, a it's huge not. That's statement. a basic it's statement. Not. Thank you. Yeah, Many people say basic. that. Most that's versatile basic. player. That's ever? basic. Uh, yes. I that's think basic. that if you ask people to make a list, LeBron would be up there. But wait a second. Not number one. Up there. But wait, Mike, but, but Mike, okay. Okay, I don't, I, I'm not going to say this started with LeBron. I'm not going to say that. But I'm saying okay. in terms of the way the game has evolved, could one argue that this positionless basketball era that we live in, LeBron has been at the forefront I of that. I would disagree with that. that. That he has not helped to usher in this era of positionless basketball? I, I'm not I saying it's for, him alone. For me. I'm saying, but I'm saying like, yeah, go ahead. I mean, for me, the way that I view LeBron, and it's not a, it's not a on the court thing, and it's not that he's not one of the greatest players either. It's sure. Just, that's not where I see his impact. But I think it's like the business of basketball, like the player yes. movement, and 100%. and all of that. I feel like clutch, he is clutch, <laughs> ma- maverick, uh, yes. rich, 
Spring Hill, uninterrupted, Unter- right? Me- yeah, media all this, mogul, all yeah, yeah huge. all of yes, So, like yes, for me, yes. when I think of a billionaire, it's huge. His influence and impact as it relates to basketball, it's in that regard, right? Like he's just a phenomenal, one of the greatest players of all time. Um, but when, again, when I'm thinking of players that changed the game, I haven't really heard a lot of people, he was on the list, but like Shaq to me is what I think of like, like it forces defenses to change how they well, go. Well, if that, it, well, if that's the case, they widen the lane for Will Chamberlain. Like, I mean, it's like, and he was on that people, list, but I'm just saying, that's right. what they, I'm, they I'm to thinking change of the rules for people, yeah. right? Like you yeah. have to change the rules or people are trying to follow what you do or because you play a certain way, everyone does it because like, let's, let's be clear. Like, like the Spurs were doing motion offenses before the Warriors were right. But like everyone didn't start saying, let's try to run the Spurs offense, even though it's a beautiful way to play. Right. And so to me, when like you're, you're eliminating positions, like I get that we have Jokic and and Embiid and they're saying the big man's coming back. But when you're eliminating positions, when you're, when people are trying to mimic you, when the entire sport has changed, like that's what I think of in terms of like influence and changing the game. But I think, but but I think, I think, but I don't think it's just limited to cultural, social, economic. I do think LeBron in his own way, again, not to the, this is not an either or, not to the extent that a Steph has, not to the extent that, you know, some of the other players were talking about that, they, that the game has evolved around them. But I'm saying in his own way, people have tried to mimic LeBron's style of play. But the point I really wanted to make more than anything is just I think there's also just how we there's people. One of the criteria was transcendent and that has multiple meanings as well. We can go down a whole rabbit hole on just the definition of transcendent, right? How people see and discuss not just the game, but life. I mean, Everybody understands what mama mentality means. Like you can use mama mentality in context outside of basketball. You know what I mean? Right. And so for right. like Kobe, right. you know, like like right like right now, if I take a shot at a trash can and go Kobe, everybody know everybody gets that. Like it's there. There's a level of of, of transcendence associated with Kobe that can only be described as influential because a whole generation of people. That's what I was saying about LeBron, Mike versus Magic. He was the player they grew up idolizing and watching and wanting to pattern their game after, even if Kobe patterned his game after Jordan. So there's also just like who is so ingrained in our in our collective psyche and in the vernacular. And it's just like, you know, I remember when Kobe died. That's why it hit all of us so personally, even if we didn't know him, because we did not know a world, a pop culture universe. Without, without Kobe, Kobe Bryant in it. Yeah, you know, so yeah, that's the, that's all I'm saying. Like, we could, we could pull on a lot of different strings with this, Natalie, because it, it's go just back like, to one of your, what, is inf- what does influence frequent, mean? And, right. Yeah. So give me your rush one of your then. Frequent, oh. Yeah, one of your frequent examples, and, and, and I want you What's to give that? me your, uh, your list after this. Your frequent examples, I'll tell you, an actual quote, what you just said, uh, was very similar to what Stevie Wonder said when Prince died. He said, I cannot mm. imagine a world in which there is no prince. And so, yeah. you know, just like, yeah. it's so strange uh, with no Kobe. You're right, uh, Kobe. But there's a connective tissue with all of these players. And every once in a while, that's why the list, really, the top four you're about to give us, that's why four rising up is appropriate because every now and then somebody does something in this connective tissue like, whoa, I, yeah. I'm so used to this, but this is different. So who are your four? So I, I, at the very beginning of this, ep- this first episode, they were talking about what makes a great player. And I want to say the first thing that LeBron mentioned, if I'm not mistaken, Natalie, was a recognition of the greats that came before them. Right. I, I don't know. Now, again, this is another definition of influence. Michael, you, you gonna appreciate this. It's going to hit right in your wheelhouse, going to hit close to home, literally, literally and figuratively. I don't know how Bring you can on. have a conversation about influence and NBA players and not start with Bill yes. Russell. Yes, both, both on the both on the court, uh, you know, being the centerpiece of the definitive dynasty in NBA history. Sorry, Lakers fans. Um, and also what he meant in terms of activism, you yep. know, um, in moved in different life. ways in his, entire, his entire, life. entire life. So if I could, if, if, if I could, I would love to. I'm a cheat. I'm a cheat. I'm gonna do that thing I do where you say, give me a top five and I give you six. Mm-mm. Rushmore. I, I can't. Rushmore. 
That's, I can't. Because, because, I can't because you got to do four. Because hey, I, because, hey, okay. and by the way, All right. time, in the interest of time, too, how about four? In <laughs> the interest of time, yeah. How about four? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I'm going to stop saying that preacher thing because all I do is ramble. Um, I'm my grandfather's grandson. I used to have to get, I used to have to get him off the pulpit sometime. They'd be like, yo, Mike, go get your grandpa. Um, I, Cause I just can't mention those things about Bill Russell and not acknowledge Kareem Abdul-Jabbar in the same way. That's all. That's what I meant. Okay. okay Bill Russell's one. Bill Russell's on that list. Steph's on that list. We covered Steph. That leaves me with only two. Um, I got to go Jordan. Um, and if I had to pick one more in terms of influence. I know who you're deciding yeah. between your final two. Who, Iverson and Kobe? Is that what you Oh, I thought it was LeBron I thought, and Kobe. I thought, I thought but Iverson, Iverson and Kobe. And LeBron. Okay. Who? I thought it was Iverson no, and LeBron. No, 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 I'm not going to put LeBron. As much as I just talked up LeBron, I'm not going to put him on. If, if you only limited okay. me to four. Okay. If you only limited me to four. I knew Kobe was one of them. Yeah, it's probably Iverson. It's probably okay. Iverson. Just, cause just like, what a phenomenon. What, what, a, what, a, what, a, what a cultural phenomenon like all that these guy lists. was. These Kobe would probably, if Kobe were here, he'd probably say, hey, dumbass, put Iverson on his list. That's what Kobe so would Natalie, probably say. So, Natalie, you're four. <laughs> Natalie, what are you for? <laughs> oh, we're directing the question back at me. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> um, okay. I'm going to have to go. I like Shaq, mm. Steph, Jordan. I guess, I'll go, yep. I guess I'll go. I guess I'll go. Um, I guess I'll go Kobe. Mm-hmm. It's hard. It's a toss up between Kobe and AI for me. Yeah. No LeBron, huh? I That's just feel like LeBron. I feel like Shaq's influence is very you, underrated. It's my no LeBron. Are you, it, it, no, <laughs> None of sure. us had LeBron. And I didn't do it either. <laughs> so sure. why are you targeting me, no, Mr. Ohio? No, 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 None no, of us had LeBron. LeBron. Y- y'all were both telling me LeBron sucked, and I'm sitting up and telling you what a great player he not is. That he and he not that he sucks. Not that he sucks at all. <laughs> okay, and we, we all kind of laid out what we thought influential was, so people are clear. You know, it's and I, like I'm I'm focusing mo- mostly on the game. You know, like how basketball yeah, is played. And that's that's my focus. And it's for a different list. No, it, it, to and to me that's and, stuff. And, like, and for yeah. me, and for Hands me, down. the list will change when we start talking about all things. All things like you did with Russell, and and Russell probably should be on there. Even if with basketball, I should have put Russell yeah. on there because if you take yeah. his activism out, the game wasn't played like that. Like that moment that the game changes where it's above yeah. the rim. Okay, yep. that's when it happened. When he when yep. the first time he stepped on the court in 1956, that's when it happened. So 56, 79, 86, 2014. Okay. Yeah. I know you have to run okay. Holly, but this is great. Let's remember this because it would have really led into like what I want the next topic to be. But like what you're just saying right there about Bill Russell, I think is important because there are people who weren't able to watch Bill Russell, didn't see him. We only hear about him. And I just want to leave you with food for thought for like when we talk again. But it's about what is the media's responsibility to teach and educate Ooh, about the game? Good. That's a tease. I like that. Ooh, that's a good stuff. Oh, okay. <laughs> Tell me something good. Oh, well, I, I, I expect to see that poll. Good. I expect to see that poll. <laughs> <laughs> I need to see this poll. <laughs> Watch it be 100%. Like, look, Mike, when you got this one right, you may not know shit about Justin Fields or running quarterbacks or much else, but you, you nailed that one. 100% agree with Michael on Natalie and Shaka Khan. I guarantee it. I'm, I'm calling it right now. It can't be the first time you heard that. It is the first time. Hey, thank you for watching Brother From Another. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, go ahead and do that now. Don't forget, you can catch us three to four weekdays on PeacockTV.com and on Sirius XM Channel 85.